Now I want to talk about 10 reasons why you should not buy property in the hood. Um, number one, property value don't go up that fast. Yeah, that's the number one thing. Property value, you just got to know this. Property value in the hood does not go up fast. Uh, um, you might buy a house and 10, 15 years later, it's still the same price. Or maybe a few hundred or a few thousand dollars more. Uh, number two, there could be um, violence in the neighborhood. It is important to screen your tenants as best as possible. However, sometimes you can't control the neighbors yeah, or yeah. some landlords may not screen or sometimes it's your tenants or the tenant's friends. Yeah. A lot of times when you're in the hood, even if you're a good tenant or you're a good person, uh, your cousin, your thing, these people might not be. So then you know, they're still family. So you kind of still have to invite them in or hang out with them. And then sometimes they have... Uh, bad troubles or they're up to stuff. Uh, number three, rude tenants. Um, tenants with attitudes. You know, unfortunately, um, this is very common sometimes with Section 8 tenants. Um, although they are uh, agreed because they, they, you know, Section 8 backed the rent and backed it. However, it could be a problem because sometimes these people think they are the best game in town, so they act like it. They come in acting like, you know, their poop don't smell and they just... <laughs> You know, they're like picking your house as if they're like the wealthiest people in the world or they're just picky or they're on HGTV or something. But that could be a little annoying because they can try to do that whole talking down to you like, and that can kind of get on your nerves. Uh, number four, security deposits may not cover all the damages. Uh, and, that, and that's true. A lot of times you have tenants who can cause so many little bit of damages. Like, for example, if someone damages two cabinets, I mean, a cabinet could be like three, four, five hundred dollars $500 each. So if they paid like $700 um, for the security deposit, if they rent 700 you know, that could be that could be it for that cabinet. Now, if you have some tenants with Section 8 and they have jobs, yeah, you could probably sue them, but I don't know if that's worth it. But um, but many times, you're probably just going to eat the cost and just keep it moving. You're probably better off. Number uh, five. five. In poor neighborhoods, trash drift around. Oh. This is really annoying. But yeah, in poor neighborhoods, a lot of times you would have um, okay. dropped the trash right on the floor. And sometimes not your tenant. Sometimes it can be the other tenant. A lot of the people that live in these areas, sometimes they just feel like, oh no, I am only going to watch my inside of my house. I have to keep my part of my house clean. If there's trash outside, that's not my business. I'm not going to pick it up. I'm not going to pick up the land. That's the landlord. Yeah. Or, or that's the city. That's the town. You know? Um, Coats and lots of inspectors tend to be in these areas. A lot yeah. of times you have a lot of, lots and lots of authority figures like you have codes you got cps workers you got cops you got and like they're all over so if they go to the house to inspect the person uh see how they're living and then they see you know the smoke detectors down because the tenants took them down so they can smoke you know, they got to send you a letter and then they say you know you gotta be like why and then you gotta go there so a lot of time this can kind of like drive you nuts because it's almost Sometimes like uh, the people are being treated kind of like their children yeah. and you have a lot of um programs to we kind of like to protect them but then it just gets over regulated there's so much regulations in there there's so many just just so much so that could get some landlords really annoying number seven it is easy to become a slumlord now this is a tricky one it is very easy to become a slumlord even if you're not a slumlord i, I used to say you know people when just buying properties if you buy properties in the slum it's kind of like you automatically kind of become like a slumlord even if you're trying so anyway okay, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example let's um, say you rent out an apartment to a single mom two kids whatever right then one day she meets a guy a little crazy and then they start fighting and you know whatever she and then sooner or later your problem starts maybe she loses her job then section 8 or programs or whatever we may stop the rent now that tenant a lot of time what they could do they will actually call codes, take off the smoke detectors, call codes to say why they didn't pay the rent because they feel like that's going to stop the eviction to show like, hey, look, there was issues in the apartment. That's why I didn't pay the rent. And believe it or not, even if the place was inspected before, it doesn't matter. The inspectors, the judges, they will act like you are a slumlord and you didn't have a smoke detector that day when they went there and that's all that matters but now so when the codes gets there and then they get there now sometimes what they start doing they start looking for other things so now let's say they see no smoke detectors the carbon monoxide's gone there's 
bed bugs because the girl hasn't been going to work. So now she's been hanging out with a lot of friends' house. So by hanging out with friends, she's brought bed bugs to the property. Roaches is in the property. I think you get it. It's bad. And if the, and if this thing and if you don't get this stuff fixed, you'll end up in court having to let this be read out in public as a public record, your name or your LLC or whatever you have. In fact, sometimes that's the best reason to have an LLC. So just, so this doesn't ever happen to you where they put print your name and said, oh, you're a landlord who had bed bugs in the property and stuff like that. And the worst thing is, it wasn't you. You didn't do it. And when that girl has that crazy boyfriend, you might actually kind of want to avoid that problem. Maybe the boyfriend's always looking at you funny, or you know, and she's still paying Section Eight, still sending the checks. So then you just you didn't notice or care. So you just said, you know what? As long as I'm getting paid, she's happy. She's living there. It's her boyfriend. What's the big deal? I don't even have to go there so much. And guess what? That's how you can become the slumlord. Number eight, longer screening. Well. When you're screening a tenant in a good area, you know, if you're screening someone and let's say 10 applicants come, all 10 have good jobs, all 10 have good credit, then you just kind of pick out which one you want. In these areas, you kind of will be screening a little longer. You will get lots of calls of people who's telling you they don't have a job, they don't have a thing, they don't have this, they don't have that. Oh, but I got cash. Or they don't have nothing, not even cash, not even a job, not even a program, but then they still feel like you should give them a chance and let them live in your Part, which is weird, but it does happen often, like very often. But you do want to screen because screening could be the difference between you having a tenant for two, three months and they destroyed your place to you having a tenant that can be for 10, 15, 20 years. Um, Number nine, old houses. This is a lot of times in these type of neighborhoods, you have a lot of old homes. And the problem with this one is this. You're going to have to be very, very careful in how you do things because you can have all kinds of asbestos, all kinds of stuff. So you don't want to just start ripping things out, especially if tenants are there. You want to be very, very careful. Make sure you put in plastic out, caution tapes, follow all the EPA uh, rules, which then lead is like a big concern, especially in these type of neighborhoods. And rightfully so, because a lot of kids are getting infected by it. Now, I know a landlord who got sued actually three times times so like he had to pay out 150 the, the crazy yeah. thing is the same lawyer usually a lawyer will find your name see if you ever had a lead issue and then they will find to see if you have insurance for lead and then they look for you and then they look to anybody else who ever stayed in and say hey do anyone want to sue this guy and they start sending out cards and all kinds of stuff to catch the people usually in his case the bank settled for 150 for each case now he told me one of the tenants right she was only there for one month yeah, she was only there for one month. And she sued him, the landlord before and the landlord after. Because the way it works is this. They test the child. And if the child had it, and then the next month she moves, she goes into a new house. And then she still, and the child still has a high level. Guess well, what? You're part of it. it that's how they look. So the whole lead thing is it's really weird. Sometimes it feels like it's completely unfair. And a lot of times they don't realize the houses are old. The neighborhoods are old. There's dust blowing everywhere. Um, that's my 10 reasons why you should not buy property in the anyway so like subscribe share thank you very much